Hi, I'm Dr. Danny and welcome to Dr. Danny TV. Today, I'm going to tell you why positive thinking doesn't really work to help you bust out of stress and self-doubt, but how positive psychology really does work and what's the difference between these two things and how you can use positive psychology to feel more fulfilled every day, regardless of whether you have time to meditate or take a vacation. So I'm a mind-body medicine doctor and one of my main areas of focus is anti-stress and burnout. What I started noticing talking to my clients and what the research evidence tells us too about men and women on their way to feeling burned out and overwhelmed and just not loving life as much anymore is that when you lose your sense of meaning and excitement about your life, it can cause more stress, blue moods and feeling overwhelmed and even some helplessness and it's helplessness to chart that new course. It's like a vicious cycle. So. There's something called authentic happiness research, and this started with depressed university students in the 1970s, and it's now moved into an entirely evidence-based positive psychology framework that can help you to beat stress and self-doubt and avoid burnout without taking a pill or going to therapy. But just telling yourself that, OMG, my life is awesome, I'm so amazing, I love my life, I love my job, etc., etc., isn't all that effective because your brain knows that it isn't exactly the truth right in this instant. This is where positive psychology comes in and saves the day because it actually lets you change your life. So positive psychology is not just think nice thoughts. It's actually a step-by-step -step system to actually generate more positive emotions and more positive brain neural networks to counter the stress and worry loops that go on in your limbic system in your brain and in your amygdala, which is the center of fear in your brain. One of the pioneering research in this area is Dr. Martin Seligman and his colleagues at the Penn State University. They are true leaders in this field and they've identified three ways that positive psychology is different from positive thinking. So now you can tell your friends why it works. So number one is positive psychology is not just a nice theory. It has dozens and dozens of rigorous scientific and medical studies to support it. Number two, positive thinking urges positivity all of the time no matter what happens. You know, you've probably heard someone say, you know, you just have to think positive at a pretty inappropriate time and it's really made you angry. But positive psychology is different than that. Positive psychology realizes and recognizes that there are times when negative or realistic thinking is appropriate. And it doesn't necessarily have to be negative thinking, but being realistic sometimes can help generate a more positive outcome, which again is good for your brain again. Dr. Seligman's research has actually found that optimism is associated with better health, performance, longevity, and social success. However, there is a caveat. They've also found that in certain situations, negative thinking can lead to more accuracy and accuracy can have important consequences. For example, if you meet with your surgeon and you're trying to figure out whether you should have knee surgery and the surgeon gives you an overly optimistic view of the chances of success of this surgery, then you're not gonna be able to make the best decision whether or not to have your knee surgery you really want to have a clear, realistic understanding of the risks and benefits. You don't want them to be overly optimistic with the risks. So that's the thing about positive psychology. It puts everything into perspective. It's not be positive at all costs. And the last way that positive psychology differs from just thinking happy thoughts or, you know, motherly advice is that the researchers, the doctors, and the health professionals who work in this positive psychology field and use it to help people usually have spent years of clinical time studying and working with the negative side of things too, like problems like depression and anxiety and burnout. For me, it's been a lot of chronic mental health that I've been working with patients for years on. And you know, we realize that positive thinking alone is not a cure or a quick fix for these serious issues. So to get started using this positive psychology today, I'm gonna to give you one exercise that focuses on what researchers call savoring. This is one of the key techniques that has been proven to work wonders in the treatment of depression and anxiety in the psychology research on positive psychology. It's one of my favorites because it can involve anything you already love and you don't take enough time to enjoy regularly or appreciate because you get busy. It's also great because it's so easy to commit to and it has major bang for your buck factor, which is great in a busy schedule. It will also give you a few minutes of zen in a hectic day to just allow you to hit the reset button and just stop the overwhelm spiral that happens so often during hectic days. So here it is. Here's how you start today. Starting today, take three to five minutes to enjoy something that you usually hurry through. Actually schedule five more minutes for this activity that you choose now in your day planner so that if you need to, you can actually plan to make sure that it happens. My favorite thing to choose 
is drinking a cup of tea in my kitchen after yoga while I listen to one of my favorite playlists instead of drinking my tea while I read stressful emails. It just makes a huge difference and I find when I start my day like this, I actually get more done because my brain starts from this unfrazzled place. Another good one that I love is walking to work or just taking a 10 minute walk over your lunch break and just enjoy people watching, not talking on your phone or rushing, just simply slowly putting one foot in front of the other, breathing, sa savoring being outside and just the people that you see or you meet as you walk. So now I wanna know what are your favorite things that you're gonna savor? Tell me and leave a comment below, I wanna know.